all of you are here today because you've done fantastic work for Edward Hospital over the years. And I think what each of you should do is give yourself a giant round of applause for what you have done. There's one particular lady here, Donna Carlson, who's in the front row, who joined uh, Edward Hospital in 1865. <laughs> oh no, oh 1965. Oh sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I was really intrigued about how well that Botox was working. But 1965, there was actually a pretty interesting year. I mean, in 1965, Naperville still voted Democratic. In 1965, St. Patrick was but a lad. Pam Davis was still in diapers. <laughs> and if you're a Cubs fan, 1965 was actually a good year as well. It, it was. It was only 57 years since you last won the World Series. <laughs> now, Donna joined the, the Edward Hospital in the uh, medical records area. And I know you're saying 1965 medical records didn't exist then. Well, I was talking to her earlier and she said they did. Basically, <laughs> basically it was uh, things like there are only two kind of um, categories, dead, not dead. <laughs> reason why I asked you to take out your business card. You're working in a business where you've got good products, your competitors have got good products, but ultimately may well come down to the relationship you've got with your customers. So what I would like you to do is to write down on the back of this business card, and then I'm going to ask you to protect the business card and put it in with your driving license or with your credit cards. I would like you to write down the three words, I'm not going to ask you what they are. Uh, I would like you to write down the three words you would like your customers to say about you after you have left the meeting with them. Write down the three words you want your customers to say about you after you have left the meeting with them. I'll give you a minute to do it. But basically what you have written down there on that business card is your brand promise. Now, a brand promise does not mean that that is what the customer sees as your brand. But if you can actually live those three words, you have a much better chance than of the customer actually seeing that this is your brand. And they will say those th th things about you. I'm asking you to put the, the business card back in with your driving license or with your credit cards is that when you go to the gas station tomorrow or go to the airport, you've got to take out your driving license for ID, you will see those three words. You will say, hey, would uh, Bill, uh, Nancy, Jerry, Francis use any of those three words to describe me after they met me at the HMMC conference? Or when you go to your clients next week, will they say those three words about me? Now, the power of this, if you really believe that, th that those three words are important, right? The next time you are making a major sales pitch, take out that business card and ask yourself, all right, what do I want them to say about me after I finish the meeting? I want them to say that uh, we're uh, proactive, uh, very good on follow-up, um, innovative, uh, easy to work, whatever words you want to use, right? Um, now, if you have that clear vision, as to what you want them to say after you've left the meeting. And if you believe that they, if they say that, you've been successful. I think what you can now do is you can actually figure out, how do I craft my presentation to get them to say those words? Now, I'm not suggesting you be manipulative, but I mean, you know, you can phrase your conversation and your sales presentation, obviously, to get the business. So, I mean, it's not just going into, uh, my objective is not just to go into uh, get a, a $4 million piece of business. My objective is right now, because decisions are not yet being taken, my objective right now is to get them to know that we're reliable, innovative, easy to work with, etc. If you go in with that clear goal, you'll have framed your thinking about it, and when you frame your thinking about that, you have a real chance of making it happen. And if you make it happen, you are... On
you have a clear goal and a clear vision as to what success will look like. Another example of an organisation that was energised by clear goal and clear vision is McDonald's. The, quest, the thing about the clear goal and vision is saying you want hot fresh food and clean restrooms is not very dramatic. But it is compelling and it is clear. And I think when you're developing your vision, it doesn't have to be dramatic, it doesn't have to be different from your competition, but if you actually make it compelling and you make it clear, you have a much better chance of making it happen. One of the so clear that can make a difference to you though is whether or not you implement what I call restroom marketing. And you're kind of saying, what is he talking about now? Restroom marketing. Restroom marketing comes from that little anecdote I told you about McDonald's. And Cantaloupe said that um, people were boycotting McDonald's because they weren't providing fresh hot food and clean restrooms. And basically what he realised is that there are certain things that if you don't get right, people will boycott your business. And one of the basic ways that people lose business is because you don't get basic things right or simple things right and your, your customers get tired of you and they'll move to someone else. It isn't because you don't have a good product, it's because something went wrong. And one of the simple little questions you could ask yourself in terms of restroom marketing is to ask yourself, uh, I would define restroom marketing as non-negotiables, alright? So for McDonald's it had to be clean restrooms, right? It had to be hot fresh food. And once they started moving away from that, they started to lose business again. For you, the non-negotiables are things that if you don't get right, your customers will walk. And a very good exercise for you to do with your co colleagues would be to ask yourself, what are our non-negotiables? What are the things that if we don't get right, we lose customers? And these are non-negotiables that don't necessarily just apply to the C-suite, to the executive office, but they apply to every part of the business. Uh, how many people here are fans of Eli's Cheesecake? A few people here, right? Famous uh, Chicago Cheesecake uh, operation. I was listening to the CEO of Eli's Cheesecake a couple of days ago at a conference, and he said the most important person in the restaurant is the bus boy. And what you've got to understand is who are the people, the equivalent of the people serving your table for your customers. And you've got to make sure that they understand what the non-negotiables are. And if they understand what the non-negotiables are, if they implement them, you're going to satisfy your customers, they're going to say good things about you, you're going to grow your business. A simple concept, but not something that people necessarily pay a lot of attention to. So that's the first element I want to speak to you about. G is for goals. 